Hello adventure fans, it's Gary Peplo, and yes, I have another cool adventure that I got to do. Now, back in 2003, I was running a video company, and I had a chance to make a DVD for this pilot, his name is Nick. And he owned a, a de Havilland Tiger Moth. Now, it's an RAF trainer, it's a biplane, and in World War II, they were using it to help their pilots get ready to use those Spitfires and stuff like that. Now, the thing that is also cool about this plane, it was also owned by Cliff Robertson. Now, Cliff Robertson is a very famous actor from, from when I was a kid. And he flew in a, a plane uh, specifically called the, the De Havilland Mosquito. And in that, he made a movie called The 633 Squadron about attacking a really, really important target in Norway. So, what's cool is he owned this plane. So, we're... Uh, actually, when we're in this plane, it's a piece of history. So I, I just want to tell you, Joe got to go on this plane and had a great flight. I had already done some flights, and so I put this video together for Joe so that Joe would be able to go back and relive what it was like doing that, not just from the ground on the video, but also from the cockpit. So join me as we find a little bit more history about the De Havilland Tiger Moth. You know, as always, I like to take you on Google Earth and show you where we're at. So if you look here, we're going to go to a place called Cable Airport Upland. Okay, we're zooming in. Now Cable Airport is a general aviation airport. The airport itself is just for small planes and stuff like that. It doesn't support large planes. If you look over here, Right in this area, these are just maintenance hangars and some more maintenance hangars here. Here's the place where you get on the planes. It's called the apron. Uh, this is the runway if you look along here. So just letting you know, this is where the uh, Tiger Moth is being housed at this time. So uh, this is where we were. Now I want to back out a little bit. I want to come out here and show you the surrounding area. Now, when this video was done, it was a long time ago, so probably about 10 years ago even. So the, the area has changed, and it doesn't look quite the same, but here are the hills that we fly through right here. Pretty cool. And then we come down through here in this built-out area, and we fly all the way this way, and you can actually see over here parts of the 10 as we're flying over the 10. Just want to give a bird's eye view of where we're at. Bird's eye view. I want to give you a bird's eye view of where we're at so that you too can get an idea of where this is taking over. Boy, the, everything has changed since um, since when I flew this mission. Well, it's a mission to me. I would really like to start here. This is going to be just a view of the plane. It's poetry. The plane is poetry now. It's a biplane and it only has ailerons on the bottom of on the bottom wing okay so it makes it a little bit slow to roll i also like looking back at the curved uh, horizontal and vertical stabilizer it's really really cool now this plane was built originally in 1930s by a guy named de Havilland. his name was jeffrey de Havilland. now this man is amazing he came up with some of the most important designs during world war ii including the plane you're going to see later is called the Mosquito. Now both these planes, almost all these planes that he built uh, of this type were wood and that made them light. In fact, um, they were fast. Now the Tiger Moth was also used as not only training but also in maritime use. So, excited? Oh, just a tiny bit. <laughs> This is my husband, Joe. Joe, Hello, this Joe. is Nick. Hello, Joe. Nice to meet you. Hi, Nick. Nice to meet you. Got a good jacket there. Yeah. It's from uh, my... for my flying days. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's kind of real. Show us that. What's that? Actually, this is a Navy jacket. Extreme cold weather. Ah. Well, I was in the Air Force. Yeah. Okay. okay. And when I was in the Air Force, I was learning how to fly, which I got this. I was a member of the Aero Club in the, when I was in the Air Force. Okay. Yeah, they're much easier uh, on maintenance. Yeah. The only problem with it was the batteries. They never last long enough. I know. Well, <laughs> two batteries. So yeah. kind of I got get a 
Now we're going to take another small tour along the fuselage here. Now, when we get to here, you can see we have the cockpit. This cockpit is cherry. It's beautiful. And as we move into the front cockpit, which, of course, they, they mirror each other, you can actually see the gauges. You can see the fuel. You can see the altimeter. You can see the compass. And it's all cherry. It's beautiful. So, I, guess, I guess you weren't available, though. Yeah. And so I told him, your pre-birthday gift. It's your pre-birthday gift. Now you've got a, a deal going on for a rice. Good night. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just me all over. <laughs> heading uh, east, then give Mark a call, tell him to look for a biplane. I'll try to fly over to the house. Okay. Since I know where we're at. You're going to fly over the house. I think Nick might have to do that work. No, I'll fly over the house. Alrighty, you ready got, to go? I'm ready. This plane doesn't have an electrical system other than okay, the basic electrical systems inside motors to make the spark plugs. So Nick has to start with a pull. And I showed you a different, couple different views of him starting this bird. Then he's got to be careful and come on in. Now, I remember sitting in this bird, I know Joe well, that you could feel the energy just coming and coming and coming. It was just like a throb that was coming through and, and there's this feeling of excitement as you're getting ready to take off. All right, now remember this is a tail dragger. Now that means that the tail is down and the nose is pointing up. So if you're the pilot, you have to rubber neck a lot. If you have to look at the cockpit, you can see uh, Captain Nick doing this right now. But going down the runway and taxiing down, you're guided, uh, you steer using the rear wheel. And you roll yourself up to where you can put yourself by the beginning of the runway so that you're ready to take off when the, the um, tower gives you uh, permission. Or in this situation, a general aviation, sometimes it's just controlled by sight. So it's all up to the pilot, but we're taxiing along right now. This plane wants to fly. I mean, we were just barely rolling and all of a sudden it was in the air. And if you look down, you can see everything. You can see, uh, uh, the, the airport, you can see the freeways, and as we kept getting higher and higher, everything got smaller and smaller, and the air was so clear and pure. It was just beautiful. So, we're moving along here, having a great time, and just banking away. Tiger Moth was easy to build, it was made out of wood, it was cheap, and it was amazing. Okay, but even though it was a very easy plane to fly for most people, it was also it had some quirks. Like for example, there was a cable system that was used for the ailerons, and you really had to give it some, uh, because of the way the plane works like this, got these parachute kind of wings and stuff like that, you had to really put in some 
rudder control and you had to just sort of, you know, manhandle a little bit more than the ones that were controlled in a different way. So this is a great plane and if you couldn't fly this plane, let's just assign to everybody that you probably shouldn't be a pilot. But the people who are flying this plane, this is for the RAF of course, the people who are flying this plane, they loved it because they could feel it. It's, you know, it's just, I don't know. You just think about how you feel behind the wheel of, a, of your car when it's just when you're going just the right speed. That's how they felt about this bird. So I love this plane. Now here you see uh, a base where they were training Indian pilots uh, how to fly the plane. And so you can see uh, they got together the camaraderie and everything else, and you can actually see the birds in fly. Pretty amazing. The really fun times was when Nick was sort of hill hopping and you could see the, um, the shadow of the plane just bouncing up and down on the terrain and I just thought this was so exciting because it felt, you could feel the speed, you could feel the energy, you could feel the excitement just going over those hills. Now here, this is a clip from 633 Squadron. You can see the plane flying through the Norwegian Fords and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. But I showed you this because I want to see who Cliff Robertson is. Well, thank you again for another adventure, having a really good time. I want to say happy birthday to my brother-in-law, Joe. I hope this helps you to remember your flight, because I thought it was amazing when I did it. And so, the other thing I will let you know is that at the end of this video, it extends a little bit. Now, I know some of you guys are like me, and just like to look, just like to look at planes. Well, I took all of my still pictures of this plane and some of the flights, so, and I put them in the music. So you can sit back and enjoy that. So it's only about 10 or 15 minutes long altogether, but I think you're going to enjoy it. Have a good time and thank you for joining me on my amazing adventures.